something is so inspiring about Berlin that you moved there. Berlin is um, it's a really interesting place because it really gives you a sense of psychological space. Um, it's a very um, relaxed, at the same time as being um, quite a party town, it's, it's still very relaxed and it's very open and it's very liberal and you have a lot of time and opportunity to spend uh, with yourself and be creative without um, pressure from other bands, people, the music industry. So it's, it's kind of like living an alternative lifestyle in, uh, in a city, which is quite hard to do, strangely enough. But you could have moved houses uh, within the United Kingdom. Yes, yeah, I could have, but I wanted to run away. I think that was what it was about. And I, but I'm too, maybe I'm still too connected to, to run too far. So Berlin is very close to London. Yeah. It's kind of, it's like a, a sister city to London. Um, lots, lots of people come from London and there's, there's a lot of traffic between, um, definitely on the art scene and the music scene, there's, you know, lots of English and American people in Berlin and vice versa. So um, it's really quick to get to and, um, but it's a very different, different atmosphere there to and London. And could you point out some specific elements in your music that have been inspired by Berlin? Um, maybe, maybe just the, the production. I think mainly because when I was writing an album like The Alternative, it's not it's not lyrically um, influenced by Berlin because it's it's more about people, and I don't really know that many people in Berlin, so it's more about the sound of the record and the way it was made in a, a dark little studio in Berlin and the club scene and the things that you listen to when you go out on party and so it's um, it's more the, the sound that I expect that kind of influenced me. Could you be a little more specific? Um, no. <laughs> what do you need to know? Well, I understand. Um, kind of instruments or um, no, because uh, the, the way that I work is, is very simple. I, I don't, I don't really change instruments that much. I have kind of one guitar, one keyboard, one yeah. drum kit. Um, I do most of the most of the clever stuff after I've recorded things. So I record it, and then I play with the sound quite a lot. Yeah. So I could be anywhere for that. Um, but in terms of um, you know what I kind of the, the maybe the the kind of the electronic side of the stuff is more Berlin. Okay. So the, the maybe the drum machines that I, the drum sounds I would use or the synth sounds I would use. It's kind of a bit more aggressive and, and dark. I don't know electronic. It is quite visual music, so at some point in the, in the process I, I have a, an image of what that song would mean to me, or a place that I might be, or, or an emotion that I might, I might have. Um, and usually that would be projected into um, the visuals that I do live, or um, any, any of the kind of, any of the imagery that surrounds IMX, like, like the video clips and the um, the visuals. Yeah. I think they are an extension of the music. They're connected in, in a very close way. Um, and they kind of represent what I imagine those songs to be about. And it might be abstract, or, but it, it doesn't really matter. It just gives you an impression of, of, a, of a world that this song exists in. I have the impression that you have a kind of a split person personality, like a Jekyll and Hyde. Yeah. Uh, that's a bit true? 
Um, I'm trying to figure that out. <laughs> uh, I think that's going to be a long process. Um, you. I think what's happened is that um, I've been very influenced by IMAX as a solo project, and yeah. it's it's become quite consuming. So I, it can sometimes it can take over your. Um, not take off your personality, but you become addicted to it, in, in, in a way. You know, you become addicted to, to the stage performance or, you, or what you do in the videos. But it's a, it's a real love-hate relationship. It's like, okay, I know I have to become this person. I know I have to become that because um, it's the best way to project my music. Chris? Yeah, it's it's mixed up. It, it, it's mixed up. I think um, that the the on stage Chris is is a more aggressive character, and I think it's 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 good for for projecting the music because it, it, I I'm the off stage Chris is a bit kind of reserved and a bit awkward and um, sh shy, I guess. So, so have, on having stage this, you put your glasses off? Yeah, I mean, I, glasses are on because it's a sunny day, but um, yeah, on stage, you know, you have, there's more, it's a more powerful position to be in, so you become relaxed so, in that position. But, yeah. It's more exposing, in a way. Yeah. Isn't, it's, oh, I'm sorry. Isn't it a struggle when you're writing lyrics, because then you're off stage? And you no. know you need to perform it live, so no, how it's, does it work? It, it's um, the, the writing and the produ producing and the recording is similar to the stage. Oh. I've become almost... Uh, I've become this character in, in the recording process. Or I feel like I am. That's maybe a more natural person for me to be a lot of the time. Um, because I, this person is, is is a little more... Uh, what's the word? Dissatisfied with, with himself. Oh. With life. With things. With the world in general. Whereas the other person is doesn't give a fuck. So I think maybe that that's the person I want to be. What does your music say about your personality, your character? I think it probably says that my personality is confused and a bit complicated. Or, um, I mean, that sounds dramatic, but I, I mean... Your it's, music is quite dramatic too. It is, it is. I think it's probably a reflection of, of, of what I would like to be. And you combine, well, different styles, mm -hmm. um, acoustic stuff, yeah, electronic, yeah. Um, is, is that part of you as well? Um, yeah, it is, it is. you find it hard to choose? Yeah, I do. In general? Yeah, I do, I do. It's, um, it's, when I, when I make a record, it's, um, I have to be very focused and simplify my, 
simplify things. Otherwise, I'd be all over the place. And I wouldn't be able to choose, make decisions. I have to have a, a solid idea of what it's going to be. So I, I'd rather that, that the record sounded like, you know, one long song. You know, because it, there, there's like a, a simplicity to that. Yeah. Rather than like, oh, one acoustic track, an electro track, a, a rock track. I, I, I don't like that. It doesn't make any sense to me. I, I like strong statements, simple statements. So um, if I were to do something more acoustic, I think I would do a whole album of acoustic tracks. Yeah. That's really interesting for me. Um, and I like to do that. So uh, maybe the next album will be more simple in that way. And what kind of music do you think suits you best? Because you've done under your own name uh, more rock um, music. And, yeah. Well, this is more well, dramatic. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Very personal, emotional music. Yeah. Uh, acoustic is another thing. What suits you best as a person? All of them, because um, I get bored quite quickly. So I, I think if or I get bored with myself very quickly. So doing different things um, allows me to explore different areas and have a goal. If I if I always have a goal, then I'm kind of forgetting about um, what's wrong with what I do. If you if you what's analyze wrong with it? because you analyze because I'm a very analytical person. Yeah. I I kind of grew up as a, a, a scientist, you know, and I was a real um, analyst. So you know, when you grow up like that, it's difficult for you to be um, always confident about what you do because you maybe think that there's something better, or there's like, or are you saying the truth in what you're doing? Is there a truth to what you're doing? And I don't, sometimes I believe there is, sometimes I don't. So um, if you move around, you kind of you're always, you're always searching and you're never committing to something in a way. Um, I think that there is a a thread of similarity to what I do. Even if I do an acoustic track, there it's it's similar to what I do. But yeah, I think that's I think that's the lyrics and the atmosphere of the track. And it sound like Madonna or Pearl Jam. Yeah, probably. I would probably sound like me. Like the drunk you confessed was so You keep me falling over Think you're giving but you're taking my life away That's exactly what what interviews are for me. Is therapy? It's it's analysis. Ana analysis, sorry. It is. I mean, and therapy can be really good or it can be really hard because sometimes you know I'm doing an interview now. I'm talking to you, but some today it just sounds like bullshit. What I'm saying. To you? Yeah. It sounds like yeah. bullshit. Sometimes. No. Not all the time. Sometimes I think, wow, I just said that. I'm incredible. And now at this. Now it sometimes it feels. Um, uh, kind of stunted and uh, irregular. Um, stunted is like oh, it's difficult to explain. It's an English word, yeah. but it's it's like it feels um, unpredictable, irregular. The flow of, of what I'm saying isn't necessarily as good as it was yesterday because that's the way people are. Ha, 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 ha. Because people are like that. People change so um, day to day, and you. When you do interviews, um, it is like therapy, particularly for me because the, the, the music that I do is quite psychological music, lyrically or whatever. It's, it's talking about human behaviour and, and, and relationships and stuff that you know that is quite um, stuff that people like to analyse. So um, this is like therapy, and it, and it, therapy. Is, is a very strange process. Yeah, and it can be. It, it can be brilliant. That's why interviews can be great. I mean, it, it's interesting that this interview is now turning around a little bit, and we're talking. It's turning around. Yeah, because it's it's changing into. We're analysing the interview process, which is interesting. Yeah. I think that's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, it's well, a bit you, strange. But you I like said that. It's 
philosophy? No, well, I did uh, on the side, but um, I did kind of science, science and art, and um, science and art as a whole no, as as separate projects. I did chemistry, bio, uh, chemistry, maths, mm -hmm. physics, and then art. Well, it's quite a contrast. Yeah, I know because I find I find a lot of creative stuff in those in science. I think it's, it can be a really creative project and really creative subjects because they're, I don't know, they're, they're so abstract in many ways. You can so, I don't can know it be you, liberating yeah. to be abstract? Mm. Yes, you can. It is for me because um, you connect, I connect much more with my subconscious and my, 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 my forward thinking mind, my, my front, frontal thinking mind mm -hmm. that you're talking to now. Um, is is sometimes blocked, and when I when I when I let the subconscious come through, maybe on stage, maybe when I'm in the recording process, when I'm writing lyrics, when I get drunk, whatever, I feel more natural with myself, and I can be I can be an idiot, but I can also be quite interesting. I do. Um, I think that that's probably my, probably my second artistic love is making visuals, not films. I, I don't. Maybe films. Maybe something else. But or animations. Because animation, I also maybe, read you yeah. like a young Schwankmeier. I love Schwankmeier. Schwankmeier is, is a real hero of mine. I, lo I love his kind of. Uh, Dark nonsense. It's 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 brilliant. It's really inspiring the way that um, it's it's a, it's a very strange process that and a unique process that he that he executes he executes. Yes. Um, uh, just this. I've never seen anything like it. Really. And it's so so methodical and so um, trashy and 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 fucked up that I, I can really relate to that. It's just, it's all over the place, but it, it somehow has this sense to it. You have a sense that it, he, he's, yeah, knows what he's doing. Yeah, he should. Yeah, I mean, it, well, he doesn't, he, sh he shouldn't, he doesn't need to know what he's doing, but you feel like he's saying something even though, even though you don't know what he's saying.
make a, a IMX scrapbook. IMX what? Scrapbook. Scrabble? Yeah. Oh, scrapbook. Scrapbook. Yes, yes. We're planning on some some interesting collection of imagery and songs and maybe lyrics. Stuff that you can't get on the record. And maybe doing something um, clever with it. I don't know, having codes in, in, the, in the book so that you can connect with the internet and do some... Like a mystery? Yeah. So you buy, oh. you buy this... You, 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 you buy this book and and you kind of unlock little little doors in the book. So it's not just, you know, it's, it connects to stuff. And maybe you're given codes that you can um, connect to where you get a track every month or something like that, or you get something new. So you keep updating the book, which is, sounds quite good. And will there be drawings of you in it as well? I think there'll be, yeah, there'll be images. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be in it, um, maybe. I mean, I think some there'll be like a kind of diary situation to it. Yeah. Maybe a, a you know a document over the last like two years or something. I have one myself here. Yeah. This well, <clears throat> I yeah. Write in it that's nice. Yeah, this kind of thing. That's good. <laughs> I, I'm, but I, I don't usually write a diary. I never have. So I well, think. Well, you've got your music as a diary. This is the diary. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I have to. Uh, and it's no problem. Thank you very much. Thanks. Nice talking to you. You too. <laughs>